Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, jambo, bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jen Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville, the beautiful and historic neighborhood of Reedville, in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted that you're part of our beautiful Reading with Your Kids family. Today, we celebrate my ancestors' wildest dreams with mother-daughter team Amanda Lynch and Ava Holloway. Hey, before our guest comes in, you know, we gave a sneak preview of the Sovereign for Kids podcast here on Reading With Your Kids, and it was so popular, it's like spun off, it's spun off into its own thing, and I, my, my, my buddy, our, our dean of all things STEM and STEAM, Jennifer Swanson, is here to tell us a little bit about what's going on with this great new podcast. Hey, Jennifer, what's up? Hi, Jed. Oh, I am so excited about our new podcast. We've been getting some great reviews. Everybody wants to find out what's going on and meet and listen to some of our scientists and engineers. We have done how do you map an underwater forest. Yeah. We have done how do you cut a person in half safely, safely of course. Yes. Mm-hmm. We have talked about... Be, uh, improving your connection with water by going on a water walk. And we have watched Vanessa Brantley Newton create illustrations that come to life. I took a water walk with my amazing niece. We had such a great time. I didn't fall into the water, but we had, re- it was really, really fun. And I love all the, I love the fact that all of our guests are giving our wonderful listeners challenges, really fun challenges that they can do together as a family. And that's so cool. Hey, tell everybody where they can find Solve It For Kids because it's not on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. It's its own thing. So please, if you want to keep listening, go over to iTunes and Apple Podcasts and subscribe. And you can download all four of the first episodes that we have, plus listen to all the new ones we have coming out. You can also find on Stitcher Radio and, of course, through our website, solveitforkids.com. Jennifer, thanks so much. Thanks for helping me, letting me be part of this awesome, awesome, awesome podcast. Well, we make a great STEM team, don't you think? Absolutely, absolutely. All right, join us over at solveitforkids.com. Joining us on the line right now from Richmond in the state of Virginia. They are a mother and daughter team, and they just created a beautiful book called My Ancestors' Wildest Dream. Please welcome back to the show Amanda Lynch and her daughter, Ava Holloway. Amanda, Ava, how are you? We're great. How are you? I am wonderful. I'm wonderful. Um, you heard both voices together. Let so folks know who's who. First, um, Amanda, can you just um, you've been on the show before. You've written a number of of children's books, and a number of them have been related to dance. So, uh, can you just uh, remind us some of the books that we've spoken about in the past? Sure. So I think the last time I was on the show, we talked about the mindfulness room. Um, Breathe, Baby, Breathe. And then I also have a children's journal, the five-minute mindfulness uh, journal for kids. And then Ava and I have recently written My Ancestors' Wildest Dreams, which um, follows a young black ballerina uh, as she dances around the Robert E. Lee Monument. And Ava, this book is uh, based on something that actually happened. You went out and you were photographed uh, dancing around the statue of Robert E. Lee, and that picture went viral. Is that right? Yes, that is right. Yeah. Tell me what, uh, first off, let me, it, it, I know it's impolite to ask a woman her age, but I, we're just <laughs> curious. You're, you're a young dancer. Can you tell us how old you are? Um, I'm 14 years old, and I started dancing when I was three. There you go, just like my daughter. I I just have to say this. Anybody out there who's not familiar with dance, and uh, you have to understand that dancing, um, especially um, classically trained dancers like ballerinas, they are the best athletes in the world. Uh, I, I'm just going to go out there on the record and say that. I know, you know, uh, a lot of men's uh, athletics gets a lot more attention, a lot more money, a lot more fame. But women dancing, they rock. 
and <laughs> and and most of them start like like Ava and my daughter when they're two or three years old, and they're they're they don't have a season. They're dancing all year long, and they're putting in hours and hours and hours. So I have the utmost respect for you, Ava, as a dancer and as an athlete. I'm curious. Tell us about uh, the, this this picture and how it came to be. So basically, we had saw on the news that people were just taking graduation pictures down by the statues. So we decided that we were going to go take pictures. And I brought my plant shoes along. So after I took that picture, it was getting shared a couple times. So I decided to invite a couple more dancers to come take pictures with me in the afternoon. And then I talked to my teacher and we had a set plan for four o'clock. So then shortly after that, or maybe a little bit before that, a photographer reached out and wanted to take my picture early in the morning. So we were gonna go down there and do that. And when I got there, my best friend that's also been dancing with me, um, she happened to be there. So we took the pictures together and they, I don't know what happened. They there. just went viral, yeah. yeah. And I think at the start of it, our governor, Governor Northam, um, had announced, um, we took those pictures on Friday, the ones that went um, viral, Wednesday. but that Wednesday, a couple of days before, um, he'd announced that the statue would be removed. It's one of the only Confederate monuments, it may be the only Confederate monument that the state owns, um, and it's all ca caught up in court right now. Um, so that was like how the initial ball um, got to rolling, and so Thursday, that Thursday, the following day after the announcement, um, I just taken some pictures on my phone and Ava's pretty humble, but those pictures had gotten shared thousands of times, which is how the photographer ended up asking if we wanted to take professional pictures. So that's just sort of how things lined up. Um, it really just was kismet. Uh, um, Warder's photographer happened to walk by and before, you know, she asked if she could take pictures um, alongside the photographer who we were there with. And before we got home, it had been shared like hundreds of thousands of times. So, what do you, mom, mom? What do you think? Why did this picture strike such a chord with so many people? Well, I think to see um, for a lot of people seeing um, black ballerinas, especially on point, um, is not pretty. It's not as common mm -hmm. um, for many people, and we got a lot of comments even from. Um, England and Ireland and different places in Europe where they had never seen a black ballerina at all. And so I think to see the beauty of that juxtaposed the statue, which is covered in graffiti and um, obscenities that people have written all over it. So I think um, just to see the contrast of that also um, was a conversation starter um, and really helped to open up um, people's eyes about different forms of protest because, you know, this was something that, you know, people interpreted as a form of protest mm -hmm. and it looked very different than some of the images they may have seen on the news. So I think that's a part of like how, you know, how this got started. Now, Ava, as a, a young dancer, and and as your mom said, we don't see a lot of young black women dancing in ballet, especially dancing on point, which is a whole other thing. Um, if if you don't have a daughter who who is danced on point, it's they they have these slippers with these little wooden blocks or torture devices in the toe. <laughs> <laughs> and and these young women dance and jump on these blocks and it's incredible um did you realize that, that the moment that you were taking this picture that you were making a uh, a, a form of protest um in the moment i didn't realize but after a couple of interviews i realized <laughs> well how does that that feel Sorry. Um, that makes me feel, I'm inspired by not only like, I'm by, inspired by other people from the movement. And I feel like that took a big part in us going to take the photos. And um, I'm happy that I can inspire someone else. Yeah. Well, one of the things, that, and and I have to I have to be honest here. My audience understands that I lose my train of thought all the time. I don't have that ticket. I have to jump on. Um, one of the things that I was, I was uh, starting to ask you was, 
did you realize when you started dancing that you were unique and that you were a young black woman who was dancing and dancing on point? And was that was that challenging for you? Um, when I first started dancing on point and just dancing in general, I didn't really realize it. I'd say our studio is a very welcoming place and we, I don't know, we're just more like, we're very based in respect more than other studios. So I feel like it didn't really. And I think, me. I think too, for Ava, um, her older brother, my son is 21 and he is a Joffrey ballet trainee. So I think that for her, it wasn't as, um, you know, uncommon for her to see. And Kennedy's sister is also a dancer. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't as uncommon for her to see um, black male and black female dancers because of, you know, their siblings. And, um, you know, I think for me, the first time that I really recognized um, the uniqueness of it, Ava did a project at school um, about point and she had on a costume. It was like a parents could come and walk around and see different projects and just the comments and the pictures that students wanted to take of her and other parents um, because her school is not, not as diverse, um, you know, as it could be. Um, I think for me was really the first time where it was like an aha kind mm -hmm. of moment that other people may not have that same shared experience of seeing, you know, black dancers, especially on point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm excited to learn more about my ancestors' wildest dream. Um, Amanda, can you tell us about the story? Sure. So um, I'm really big on representation. I think we talked about that the last time I was mm -hmm. on. And um, having kids that either are my kids or look like my kids be able to pick up a book and see themselves. And so um, the young lady in the book, it's a poem that Ava and I wrote. Um, she's sort of dancing her way through um, different experiences at the Robert E. Lee um, statue. And she has a big Afro puff that she calls a pineapple puff. Um, and it's really just like a book about empowering young people. Uh, in the back of the book, there are a hundred affirmation statements. So like one is, you know, I am trustworthy. I am capable. Like, so it's a hundred statements um, like that. And it's a pretty fairly short children's book, I think. Um, kids seem to really like it. We've gotten a lot of feedback from parents. Uh, one parent um, sent me a message last night that she was crying while she was reading it, and her daughter was saying, look, I have a pineapple puff too. So um, people seem to really connect with it. Um, I'm really proud of Ava because writing is not her first love. <laughs> She's more interested in science and math and languages. Well, not math. Well, not math anymore. <laughs> 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 so science languages <laughs> and uh and so you know this was a nice challenge for her as well and and the book is i mean it's done amazing so yeah uh, you know I, I i love ava she's like yeah yeah not, not math I, I, the stem <laughs> i you just drop off the m and the stem stuff huh? it ain't for me uh, no more math <laughs> <laughs> ava i'm wondering um what it's like, I mean, your mom was just talking about, uh, you know, a, a mother who, who purchased the book reached out to your mom and said that she, reading the book made her cry. And I'm sure it's, you know, tears of, of joy and inspiration. Have you taken a moment to think about the fact that, that not only that, that picture and that act of protest is inspiring people all over the world, but this book that you helped create yeah. is inspiring young people all over the world, not only now, but f for, you know, the foreseeable future. Well, actually, I had not thought about that much <laughs> now that you bring it up. I haven't really thought about that, but now that you mentioned it, yeah. Well, if I send you pictures all the time of the kids with their little fist up. And, and everything in my head. Oh, <laughs> that I'm a role model. <laughs> oh, look at that. And, and the girls were on today's show. So I think um, from that experience as well, um, lots of parents of all races were sending me pictures of of their kids um, sort of reenacting, you know, the, the poses that they saw Ava and Kennedy um, in. And so it's been very inspirational, I think, for all of the girls. They've even started their own nonprofit, Brown Ballerinas for Change, um, and establish a scholarship at Brown Girls Do Ballet. Do Ballet. So um, we have a scholarship for other um, brown dancers who otherwise wouldn't be able to afford dance that's open across the nation. Um, and then, of course, our local nonprofit that the four girls have started. So, 
At 14 years old, into science, into dance, starting your own nonprofit, you know, I, I wish you had a little bit more motivation, Ava, you know. Um, <laughs> I, 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 no, what I have to, I, I, I'm obviously joking. You are an inspiration. You're an inspiration to me and that you are a young person and the rap on young people are that, you know, they're just playing video games all day long and they're not involved and they're not going out and, and being proactive. Um, what is it in you? What has motivated you to not only, you know, excel in this discipline called dance and point, uh, but also, you know, to create this nonprofit? Um, I'd say the school I go to and where I've grown up, it's a place where everyone has a different opinion. So I am hoping to hopefully change some of those opinions and help us all be more united in as a community. I, I, I want to thank you for that because I have to tell you, I'm much older than I look. I'm closer to 100 than I am to, to your age. <laughs> and, and I'll be very honest with you. I'm, I'm really sad. I'm really bummed up that we still have to have the same argument and the same protest that were happening when I was 14 years old. And when I was, I think it was, I was seven or eight years old when I heard Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. And I think I heard it live, or at least the, the day that it happened on the news. And, you know, I remember sitting down with my dad and saying, yeah, this is, that's, yeah, I want that for everybody. But here I am decades later, and we're still fighting the same fight. And so as as sad as I am that that's happening, I'm really happy that we have young people like you and my kids who are going to carry this fight on and are not going to stop until that dream comes true. And I think you hit it right on the head. Like I was talking to my mom yesterday um, just about having grown up in Hanover during segregation and Jim Crow. Um, Hanover, Virginia is um, not far from here, and it's a more rural county um, and just the experiences of my grandparents and how proud they would be to see what Ava, Shania, Kennedy, and Sophia are doing as Brown Ballerinas for Change. Um, the, the street Monument Avenue where um, the Robert E. Lee Monument is located um, was designed to set to create a, a segregated community um, within Richmond and all of the monuments were built well after the Civil War. Um, Robert E. Lee himself thought that the statues would be divisive and mm -hmm. requested that they not be built and they built them anyhow at the height, <clears throat> at the height of Jim Crow. So, you know, they were all designed, you know, basically to terrorize black citizens. Um, and so here we are, you know, still 125 years later having these same conversations. And, um, I'm just glad to see that, you know, Ava could be a face um, for why some of those things need to change and why some of these uncomfortable but courageous conversations need to happen. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'll be honest with you. Growing up in the North, um, I, I never imagined that there were Confederate statues, you know, in the South. And it wasn't until I started touring and performing. And I, I, I'll be honest, I was quite surprised. I'm like, I thought you guys lost. I thought that's why, you know, we... <laughs> We, we we joined together to end this, and now we have monuments to it. Um, Ava, what do you ever sit back and think about your grandparents and your great grandparents, and, and think about what they might be thinking as they're looking down on you? Um. Well, from the grandparents that are still alive they would definitely tell me what they're thinking every like every day pretty much i'll get a call every day from them we're, we're really close to my parents <laughs> yeah they'll talk to me about what's going on a lot but for the ones that are not so on this earth um i mean i can only imagine what they would say uh. yeah ava was really close to my grandparents um my grandmothers in particular and so um, you know, their, her family nickname is Superstar, and it's always been, she's always sort of made sure she had her own seat at the table. So, um, I think they would just be like riveted by the response. This, the picture of Ava and Kennedy was used as a piece of evidence 
in the Senate hearing um, when the senators were talking to um, AG Barr about their, you know, um, violent response uh, to the protesters in Portland. This was the last image in the um, evidence bank that they used, you know, to show that, like, many of the protesters and most of the protesters are not violent, but they're still being met with violence. So, you know, it's it's been shared by Christina Aguilera, Beyonce's mom. I mean, it's just been... Beyonce's mom? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> they were in the New York Times. I mean, it's been like a, you know, a conversation piece just everywhere that you can imagine. So, um you know, I, I just know my grandparents would just be, they would just be floored. They wouldn't be surprised, but they would be floored. Very, very proud. Ava, I'm curious, um, what what do you see yourself doing in the future? In the future, I want to go into a medical career. I haven't really decided which one yet, but hopefully we can figure that out in the next four years. Well, I have a feeling whatever you put your mind to do, you will be doing. Um, I, 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 again, I just, I just love the fact that uh, a, a, a young woman, you're making your dreams come true, and, um, and, and that's fantastic. And you're inspiring other people, and it, it's, uh, it's amazing at this time. We live in this time where a picture can be shared around the world in seconds. When I was your age, I had to make a phone call. If I wanted to call another city, it cost extra money. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, wow, wow, wow. This is just amazing. Uh, Amanda, tell everybody, please, where we can go to find out more about your books, but also find out uh, more about My Ancestors' Wildest Dream. So all of them are available on um, all of the major retail um, sites online, so Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, Walmart. Um, you can also, if you'd like autographed copies, go to www.rethinkingresiliency.com, and all of my books, including um, the one I co-authored with Ava, are available there. Um, I think and then many, many museums are also including My Ancestors' Wildest Dreams, and so the list is growing by the day. So, um, yeah, that's exciting, too. Absolutely. And Ava, I just want to put this out there to you. If you're ever in the Boston area, we start every show by reminding people that, that the podcast is being recorded in, in the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville. And we're in actually a tiny little neighborhood in the city of Boston on, on the, the, the city line. And our neighborhood is where the men of the 54th Infantry, the first black infantry, yeah. trained to go and fight in the Civil War. The, 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 these, these men, they, their, their story was uh, told in the movie Glory many years ago. Um, and uh, our backyard was their landfill. <laughs> we, we, keep, we keep on digging up little bottles and everything. But, the, but those, those men trained right here, two blocks away from my house. And there's a, a nice little monument, tiny, very beautiful little monument to those men in our neighborhood. If you're ever in the Boston area, I would love for you to come down and take a picture on point next to that statue. I definitely will. You'll have to make a road trip. Yeah. There you go. Well, we've been, we've had such a, an inspiring time speaking to the authors of My Ancestors' Wildest Dream, Amanda Lynch and Ava Holloway. Amanda, Ava, thank you so very much for being part of the show today. Thank you thank so you. much for having us. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We have another mother-daughter story. A little bit different than today's episode and today's pairing. Uh, our, our guest on the next episode of the show is Lydia Kahn. And, and she's here to tell us about the story of the can't that could. A book that was written by her mom many decades ago. And Lydia tells us how it was her lifelong dream to publish the story that her mom told her when she was a little girl. That's the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. If you are the author of a fantastic children's book, you may be a 
tad frustrated by the fact that all the traditional ways to promote your children's books, well, they're just not available. At least the most popular ways to promote your books, things like school visits and library visits and book signings. You know, it's in the age of COVID and the lockdowns and learning online, it, it, those things just aren't happening. And if they are happening, they're happening with very, very tiny, tiny audiences. We have something that may help you. It's called the Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read Program. It's a way of letting folks know that your book is worthy of their consideration. If our panel of uh, teachers, parents, and kids believe that your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a certified great read. And with that status comes a, a number of fantastic tools that can really help your book stand out. Check it out today. Please go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the author services button at the top of the page to find out about this great program. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so very wonderful. Chris, I want to thank our guests, Amanda Lynch and Ava Holloway. Be sure to check out my ancestors' wildest dream. Also, want to thank my incredible team, starting with my producer Fatima Khan. I want to thank my awesome author ambassador Peggy Cotto. I want to thank my beautiful wife. We just celebrated our 30th anniversary. I want to thank her for all the love that she's brought into my life and all the support she's given me. Most of all, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for all the support that you are giving to your kids. It's so challenging, especially now. I want to thank you for all the love that you show your kids. Most of all, I want to thank you for, for taking the time to make the world a better place. And you do that every time you read with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. <laughs>